Hey folks, so what have we got here? Okay, uh, LCD TV that my neighbour's got a problem with. Um, it's a Toshiba 23DL933B. Uh, so I can get some zoom on that. Yeah. There we go, yeah, so that's it. Apologise for the uh, noise in the background. It's a fan on my power supply. The power supply has decided to run a bit warm, so I'm just making sure it gets, gets plenty of cooling for the LED lights. Anyway, I'm not going to bother you with all the uh, usual crap. Basically, plugged in, uh, no matter what, there's no uh, power at all to it. So, already what I've done is I've taken, unscrewed the back and lifted the back off. Um, I just thought there'd be an interesting gotcha. I'll just zoom out so you can see it's a bit better. Uh, on here, you got the mains cable goes in, that way around. Now then, being the pain in the arse that it is, is actually when you lift the back off, you've got to get your hand in under this edge, just un under here, and release, release the clip. Release the Kraken! So yeah, that clip, undo it, and pull it out. Obviously making sure the other end ain't plugged in, otherwise it's going to hurt. Right, so once you've got rid of all that, put it on one side, screws on the outside edges, a couple down here. Um, I need to move this camera a bit. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Okay, so ready to go, rock and roll. Now, the clips on this are a motherfucker. Um, if I see if I can show you. So, just there, these clips. Uh, slot into the bezel, there's a little clip down the bezel, so not only have our little nip friends um, fastened it down with screws, it's also held in with M clips around the bezel, which makes for awesome fun. As you can see, this model has the built-in DVD, um, and also a common fault, uh, I've heard of this a number of times, is on, I can't really show, down here, there's a little switch uh, for volume up and down, manual volume up and down. It's actually a push button as well. Press on and off. And apparently a few people have sent TVs in for repair. When it's turned out, it's just this switch needed pressing. This one is not that. Uh, so before I started, I made sure the fuse was okay, changed the fuse, um, everything looked okay there. Um, this here is the power in. So this is your mains in. And this is the board we're interested in. Uh, your main board, your processor board rather, and this is your uh, LED driver board, okay? Um, and that's your T-Con board. But we don't need to worry about them. So the, the issue with this is uh, there's zero power. Um, so it's just, it's very, it, a very common fault. Um, and you know it's it's a case of just having a look. So first thing you do when you look at, when you fault find it on on one of these LCD TVs, this board, by the way, is a 17PW80 version two, which is made by. Um, right to get this to get this off, lift the clip. Made by Vestel. Uh, it's used in all sorts of small TVs up to around the 32 inch, around that sort of time. This board is just so common, it's crazy. However, it's so shit, it's crazy as well. Don't get me wrong, it does the job. It does the job well. It produces power. Um, so, anyway, first things first, check the caps. So, you've, if you're watching this, you probably know about issues with caps on these boards, or on any TV board for that matter, TV power board where what you're looking for at the end of the, end of the capacitor is, I don't have a blown one, but I have one so you can see a bit better. See the end of the capacitor there, that square? So a capacitor is filled with, uh, there's some fluid in there, liquid, uh, uh, electrolyte trapped liquid, and it's separated off with bits of paper for one of a better way of putting it. Um, and what happens is, if there's a short or if there's an issue within the capacitor, then this will split, it'll bulge out, and split and release the uh, release the uh, gases in a controlled manner, semi-controlled anyway. It's better than it not having a weak spot and just exploding everywhere. So that's what you're looking for: is this cap 
that cross probably slightly splits maybe some little darkening around it something like that um, or you may, you may see something down this end but more often than not if there's an issue it's going to be at that end um, yeah excuse the rest of the junk around here being in the middle of those things anyway so a quick check of the capacitors to make sure that everything looks okay which it does and then we'll pop this board off and so just undo the screws I mean it's quite they're quite a nice little TV it's just this these boards are just so weak um, I mean I'm not gonna profess to be any sort of expert at all on these things um, this is only about third or fourth TV that I've repaired I've done a few DVD players that kind of thing uh, mess around I've just been doing this well and I always will be doing it of an amateur matter in an amateur matter rather um, so that's the connector to the main board so we'll pop a screwdriver in and just gently help it ease out lifting up because otherwise it'll get if, if you don't lift it up it'll get stuck on that piece of that bar there there we go so there's our board out this is the board with the issue so uh, I'm just going to switch off for two seconds while I shuffle shit around and we're off again okay so here's our board uh, so that's just a standoff in there so we'll being that I'm so amazingly unprepared we'll pop that out got a little cup with all the screws in so all the fasteners are in one place something you should try and get in the habit of doing also when you're taking screws out the back of a TV keep an eye on the length if they're all the same length it doesn't really matter but if they do start coming out in the different lengths you've got to make sure you put them back in the right place because if you put too long of a screw in a hole that's not deep enough then you stand a chance of splitting the plastic in some way right anyway so the caps all look beautiful you can see there there's no swelling and on them too no apparent swelling so we're just basically having a look around and see if there's anything obvious because more often than not it will be something obvious so what can we check on there we can check the discrete we've got some diodes that we can check check for continuity on them now I'm going to be checking these on the board so there's a good chance of getting a false positive as in um, you check the diode and it will return an open circuit or a closed circuit um, open circuit rather um, no matter which way around you do it uh, why because you might be feeding back through the circuit somewhere um, and so it can be a pain in the arse trying to figure them out so what I'll be doing is I'll actually be desoldering um, these diodes I'd, sorry that noise in the background is just me unpacking my most amazing uh, desoldering tool my solder sucker so I better switch that on ready for the desoldering right so multimeter is set on diode and let's have a little poke around so you can hear the beep quick test yep we're good so that's pretty awesome now let's check the other way around oh that's not good so there we go now then we're getting a reading on this this side and there we so there's one that's whilst it's not good what we need to do is we need to read the schematic find out what it is it's a shock key diode, diode. now I don't know whether you heard that there so that diode there so these ones are a let's see if I can read it five four five four or two yes you have five four or two so that is a standard one uh, yeah they're all standard in but oddly now within Let's look at the back of the board. 
So we've got the transformer coming out. We've got 12 volts on one side, 24 volts on the other side. So we're coming out here from the transformer. And we're going straight up to the diodes. Now that looks a little bit messy. Don't know if you can see that very well. Looks a little bit messy on there. So I'll probably have a clean up with that. Make sure it's okay. That does look very messy actually. Uh, but you can see that these are the three diodes there. The diodes are in parallel. Uh, can you see that okay? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, so them three diodes are in parallel. Then we've got these other two diodes down here. Well, there could actually be three, but there's just not, you know, for saving money or whatever, they've not put one on. And so those are in parallel as well, as you can see. So that's the blank one, the one that's not there, and the other two. And so that comes from negative or positive, that comes negative or positive. I haven't, I haven't uh, put a meter across to find out what that is. I'm not going to. Um, but basically what I'm going to do now is to verify these. Is I'm going to desolder one end of the um, the diodes and we'll put the meter across them again just to verify make sure they are all acting as expected um, but after some uh, scooching around on the tinter webs uh, it is a common fault for these diodes to go so if you've got three you got we've got in this pack there's three diodes in in parallel each has a forward voltage so if the forward voltage is slightly different on one then there's a good chance the load is going to go to the others and they're going to overheat and just bake themselves Right, beans, I've just nearly burnt myself on my desoldering gun. Without further ado, let's see if it's warm enough. Yep, that looks warm enough. Quite handy, the soldering gun. So. Let's just get these, all three of them desoldered. Nasty. So, has that done the trick? That appears to desoldered them yeah so he says I hope I sounded full of confidence there and then fail there we go says so one two three so they're all desoldered so we should now be able to test them I just need burning myself again get that thing unplugged really handy get air kit so this works, it saves having to use one of those little mechanical hand tool things, which are really cool. Uh, I use one of them as well, but that I find is much better because you can do it all with one hand. So that's brilliant. So, yeah, that, that's something I need to learn. Is actually cleared up after myself, so there we go. Not sure what that is, don't ask. Might not, you might not want to know the answer. Right, so then, here we go. So let's try these diodes again. Yep, so we've got a dead short. Or have we? Well, that one's okay. Oh, there we go. See, so cool. So that one is the one that has gone. And these were shown a dead short because it was just going through there. So we could just get away with replacing that one diode, which, but being as it is set, if I replace that diode, how do I know I'm getting a diode out of the same batch as the other two? I don't. So the safest method is to replace all three, which is what I'm going to be doing next. Well, shortly anyway. Um, they're on order. Are they on order? Yes. Yeah, so they've been ordered. Um, Mouser and RS components, they're about 17 pence each. Uh, you got to wait like 20 weeks or something stupid when they arrive. Um, but the pe people who own the, own the TV that I'm repairing for them, uh, I've given them the information and I'll let them actually choose where they want to buy them from because eBay sell them you get a, there's actually a, there's people on eBay sell a repair kit for these things which is quite interesting the repair kit consists of 
three diodes. That's it, three diodes. And they charge around a fiver for those three diodes. And so if you buy them from Mouser or somewhere like that, from the source, for three uh, for 17 pence each, plus the 18, call it 20 pence each, then for a pound you can get five, replace all five. Or you can pay these uh, these people who, who um, I'm not, I mean, everyone's got to make a book. Uh, but I think the fact that they're actually telling you that they're selling you a kit, a repair kit, uh, is a bit off when it's just a few diodes, which is a repair kit anyway. But anyway, yeah, I just don't think it's right. Anyway, so replace them, uh, wait for them to arrive, and so that they arrive Wednesday. Today is Sunday. Um, so hopefully we'll get. I'll get. I'll do another video of replacing them, replacing all five. I'm going to leave them like this rather than take them out because even though it's marked on the board underneath you can see that yeah you can see the mark the line um things could go horribly wrong i might forget yeah 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 uh, i'll do them one for one uh, so i can make sure i get the correct uh, polarization and that kind of thing on them um yeah and that's it sweet